it's on. We're recording. Are we recording? We sure are, Jeff. How Be- are you today? Beautiful. Well, it's a sad day. Is it? I- Another another one of my predictions has gone awry. <laughs> eight and six, or no, it wouldn't work. Eight and eight. We'll yep, eight now and we're eight. eight and eight. We got yep. Now we're eight and eight, sneaking into the wild card. You know, uh, which I saw our percentage chances of making the playoffs today is one percent. Is it one percent now? It, it's one percent because we do have uh, we have to bend over and take it up the tailpipe because. Uh, Derek Henry's coming to town, and he is just going to run all over us. Yep, it is. Uh, and next week he'll be playing seven and nine. Yep, that's we'll see. Yeah, that, then we'll need to sneak in at seven and nine. <laughs> but then Tom Brady comes to town, and all of our corners on IR, so he'll probably carve mm. us up pretty good. So we'll be at about six and ten. Yep. Yeah, man, all of our corners are gone. And then finally, on week 17, we play Minnesota, where another just tremendous running back in Delvin Cook will just feast upon our dead carcasses. I, and I by, think, the end, you'll, by the end of the season, your prediction for our record will be correct. I think, well, it depends on how bad Stafford is hurt. I don't know what... Uh, Negative. Is it, is Negative on fine? broken ribs. He's got, his ribs are fine. They're not broken. I don't know that they're fine, but he, they say he's in an incredible amount of pain. That's what I saw. He's in a lot of pain, uh, so they're probably bruised, maybe? Yeah, or, uh, I mean, I wonder if he's got some sort of uh, puncture very similar to uh, Drew Brees. Remember he had that uh, punctured lung in addition to all the broken ribs? Maybe, yeah. It could be a fracture. Uh, he uh, Last time he got so – I saw somebody post a thing about last time he got uh, hurt real bad. It was uh, – what was it? Was it the Jets? Who was it, years ago? He was doing the same exact move. Oh, and he it was got, the Raiders. It was, it was the, the Raiders. Raiders. Yeah. Yeah, and he got sandwiched and uh, the same exact yard line. Yep. Mm-hmm. That's what he gets for trying to be a hero. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, take that, you, you jerk. <laughs> Try, <laughs> trying to win the damn game. This is what you get. <laughs> I just – that yesterday's game, he looked great. I mean, in the two games that he's played since Matt Patricia's been gone, he looked like the Stafford that – people have you have a you have a tough time criticizing him you know yeah yeah he did look good he overthrew a couple times you know there was a couple opens where he overthrew and the missed you know bombs there a couple yeah. big bombs he missed but other than that uh bevel has seemed to have unleashed my man mm-hmm. and he is throwing quite a bit all over the place and he looks um, good yeah he looks good i am i really hope that uh I don't know. I, I want him to stay. I kind of want him to stay. I mean, I would not be upset if he stayed at all. I've I, through the entire time we've been doing this, I've said to you how big of a Stafford fan I am. And I just, I want what's best for him at this point. At this point, sure. I'm like a, a concerned parent that thinks he's not fulfilling his potential because of the circumstances around him. And I just want best. For, I just want what's best for my baby boy. Right. You just, yeah, you don't, uh, you don't like his company. Mm-hmm. You're, you're like, oh, I love my son, but uh, his friends are just not letting him reach his potential. And he's like, you mean the entire team of the Detroit Lions? He's like, yeah, all of them are dragging you down. I go, think hang, go hang out with some better friends over in Indianapolis or Denver. Um, I think he's got some bad influences in upper management and in the coaching staff. But you know what I like? I like this Bevel kid he's hanging around. Yeah, like he sets a real good example. It seems, yeah. and I'm gonna say it again, based on how the offense did look yesterday against Green Bay, I'm convinced that Bevel is little finger in. I'm, I'm, he sucked that team down to the like the he was the offense was so bad under Patricia, and I think yeah. Bevel just had these aces in his sleeve, and he's like, I'm gonna get my chance, and I'm gonna show him what we can do, and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna give this to Patricia. I think, uh, I think. I think Patricia, I think Bevel was laying in the grass like a damn snake, ready to pounce. And now he's showing everybody that yesterday's game was so competitive. We, I mean, what, it was 31 24. And then the last time we played uh, the Packers, when it was with uh, old Matty P, we oh, lost 42 to 21. Yeah, they spanked us last time because he was just, I don't know, what Matt, Matt Patricia is just like, I'm a conservative man and uh, I don't want to do anything. Yeah, my defense stinks. And we're like, oh, okay, let's hire him and give, give him a lot of money. And then finally, we get a we got a head coach with the first name Daryl, 
which I've been one, you know, for years, you know, as long as I've known you, you've said that I've always said, you know, I think a head coach that you could call Daryl will uh, do wonders for this team. That you could call by his first name. Mm -hmm, Yeah. (laughs) Yep. He's coach Daryl. They're like, (laughs) Hey coach Daryl, should I whip the biscuit? And he's like, you whip that biscuit boy. And then they do it. You put some honey on it. You put some honey on that. I'm (laughs) Daryl. And I like Whip my that southern hoodie and slap some honey up on it. <laughs> Put some honey on that biscuit. Whip it, you southern son of a bitch. You know, and uh, <laughs> Matthew's like, "Thanks, Daryl." And they're and they're a good combination, you know. And they're whipping that biscuit. They and are whipping the, that biscuit. And it's like, we're putting up points. It's just our defense is uh, trash. They are. Good lord, is Tavi slow? So bad. The defense is so bad. Matt Terrible. Patricia, in, in the two and a half years that he was here, in a lot of the uh, – now, now listen, some of the – I mean, Jamie Collins has been a stud. I Jamie think Collins that's, good. Like, at least we've got him for three years because that's who we're going to have to build this defense around. But, my God, some of the other picks that we've got – I mean, mm-hmm. July Tavai was awful. Oh, my God. You can see how slow he is. Jared you Davis, You can just watch him on good. TV, and, and he's just like he, – he runs like <sighs> – like you can hear him struggling to catch people like an old 8-bit video game yeah yeah he's i mean he's the slowest man um and and yet he was the second leading uh linebacker as far as uh field time yesterday he was in on uh 61 percent of the snaps yeah i don't know why they don't just toss toss gillibrew in there see what see what gillibrew can do see what he can brew up for the team he was on the field only special teams yesterday yeah, it's all, it's all they put Killebrew in there. They're just like, they won't let him. I say toss him in a linebacker. I mean, it makes sense because Killebrew would just be a faster version of Tavai. They're both supposed to be just thumpers, and at least yeah. uh, Killebrew can move. Yeah, he's fast. Everyone's like, oh, I don't know if his football IQ. It doesn't matter at this point. I bet Tavai could be the smartest football IQ guy out there. You can't, all he could do is be like, yep, I knew that's where they were going to go. That's all he could do. <laughs> he's, he's like, ah, oh, I'm a brilliant – brilliant football player watch this they're gonna run up the middle right past me and if right. has to be a terrible terrible player in this part of his life so he can go on to be a coach mm-hmm. yeah he's always, learning you know, his playing career never took off but as a defensive court here's what he saw all the plays developing he was just too slow to get there mm-hmm. yeah yeah you can't say the man doesn't see it happen <laughs> <laughs> Here's the thing. Here's the thing about Jelani Tavai. Back when he was playing, back when he was missing all those tackles, you could just see him licking his lips, and he wanted that biscuit. He yep, wanted yep. that biscuit. He saw every play develop, knew where it was going, and he watched it happen. <laughs> <laughs> um, in regards to uh, calling our coach Daryl, you just always wanted to coach. Um, I've I've been listening to some of his um, <laughs> yeah, press coach conferences, Darryl. and they call him Bev, which I I kind of love. Doesn't Bev just make you think of an old lady who throws together card card parties for her? And yeah, her yeah, it does. They call like him little Bev. finger Sammies. It's Bev. All the reporters call him Bev, so I have to imagine the team calls him Bev. <laughs> hey, Bev! <laughs> wow, what a combination of just bad names. You, it was so bad. He's like, hey, Daryl. Like, oh, don't call me Daryl. Call me Bev. <laughs> Hey, Daryl, whip that biscuit. Or, hey, Bev, where's the duvet? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I learned to whip the biscuit from my great aunt, Beverly. So please call me Bev. <laughs> In homage. In homage. And I'll tell you what, that woman, she, she uh, I don't remember what they do with the, who, who, who takes care of the bees anyway? She used to make the finest honey. And that's what she called me. Her sweet little narrow, you call me Bev or honey. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I want. Yeah, way better. Coach than, Honey. Way, yeah, <laughs> I love Coach Honey. Way better than the uh, the defensive Coach Corey. Ugh. Oh boy, Corey. Jeez, geez, Louis. Uh, a man with gray hair should never be named Corey. Just, yeah, I'm just saying that right now. If you're an old man and you're like, "Hey, how you doing?" Uh, I, I saw the Challenger explosion as an adult. <laughs> Call me Corey. Get the hell out of here. <laughs> if you're an adult and your name is Corey, you introduce yourself as Sir. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you gotta abandon Corey once you hit 41. <laughs> He's, he can't go Co. Core? No. Yeah, I don't know. It's long for Corey. Is it just Corey? I think Corey's the the given name. What an awful name Corey is. <laughs> <laughs> you know what a great name is, though? Mm. Robert. Robert's good. Because yeah. 
with the loss to uh, Green Bay, I don't see Bev. I don't see Bev getting this job. Yeah, yeah, I don't think so. It would be nice if he stuck around as OC, maybe. I'd love if, it if they wanted but, him because clearly he, when you let him do what he wants, he's pretty creative. That first drive, the shovel pass into the end zone. Mm-hmm. I mean. I, I haven't seen creativity in years. <laughs> well, you 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 must not be watching the Kansas City Chiefs because that is their go-to on the uh, on the old goal line there. But I will say, in regards to keeping old Bev on as OC, I don't see how it can happen with a new head coach. You cannot have any part of a fractured locker locker room where loyalties lie. True. I love true. I love Bev. I love old Coach Honey. I I wish him well. I, he's. In the two games he's played as, uh, or he's coached as our head coach, I, I feel the same way about him that I feel Matthew Stafford. I want nothing but the best for you, man, but it's not going to end up being here. Yeah, yeah. Maybe uh, maybe the two of them go off to Denver together. Matt and Daryl just you think going to the mountains. <laughs> you think Fangio's going to get fired out there? I don't know, maybe. It's maybe. A poss- <laughs> it's a possibility. I would like to imagine just, you know, just – Send old send him to the mountains. They give you a couple of mountain men and grow some beards. Like you would your nice mountain man beard. Matthew Stafford grows a real nice mountain man beard where it's like he comes from way up in the mountains where it grows in patchy and shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then he comes down, throws some bombs, tries to be a hero, you know. What's that then, biscuit? Yeah, and then heads back up to uh raise his family. <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> Two, two popular destinations I have heard is because I want to ask you this. It's, it's, it's that time to just discuss uh, it's, it's draft season. It's, it's something that we all have to uh, think mm-hmm. about. Two popular locations that I've heard about um, Matthew Stafford being traded to are the Rams because they are, I mean, when I read this, they were not happy with golf, but golf's been playing okay over Did the past not. couple of weeks. Oh. And then um, Washington because Washington – feels like maybe they're only a quarterback away from uh, being able to win that division on the regular and maybe don't want to wait for a youngster because they've already invested that 10th round or that 10th overall pick last two years ago in Haskins. That's not panning out. That's not Um, panning out. Smith has got, you know, like we said when the last uh, time we were here talking about them, he's got that dead foot, you know? Yep. Yeah, but since Smith has come back in, they have been the uh, seventh best offense since he's been starting. The, he's 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 great. Yeah, yeah, Smith. Yeah, Smith is good. But I mean, he's got what? Uh, is he? He's probably done, right? Does he? Th- do you think he's got another to. season? I don't know. If he does, it's going to be that. Whenever, if he does have another season, I do firmly believe it's going to be that season where everyone's like, "Yeah, he probably should have hung it up last year." He's going to stay one year too long. Whether that's next year or the year after, yeah. I don't know. But he's going to stay one too long. Yeah, I mean, obviously, he is a guy that does not want to leave. <laughs> no. <laughs> I put We're my like, life on hey, the line, man. quite literally. <laughs> yeah. Hey, man, your foot's kind of hanging on by a thread. He's like, I can still throw. Like, okay. Did you see it oozing blood the other night against Pittsburgh? I mean, it looked like it was, it looked like it was sewed on, and it was just about to ooze itself off. Oh, good Lord. But before we, uh, we go to the guest, I want to ask you a question. So those are the potential. It's not, we're not going to go to golf because um, – LA doesn't have a first round pick. And I think that the only three use move Stafford is for a first round pick. Now, hypothetically uh, we can move up. We are currently sitting at the 11th pick. Um, We can move up to the fourth overall pick. And if we trade Stafford um, with the likes of Washington, you're probably looking at a top four pick and a top 15 pick. Would you trade both of those picks? If the jets were willing to do it, would you trade a top two top 15 picks, one top five pick uh, to the jets to get Trevor Lawrence and just like, Let's go. New head coach, new GM, franchise quarterback considered a generational talent. Let's go. Again, it's a huge hypothetical because I don't think the Jets would do it. But I don't think they would either. But, you know, if they would, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I think you're right. Yeah. I think if they're willing to do it, I don't think they're going to. No. You know, because, I mean, Darnold, I don't think he's good. No, I don't think he's going to be there for very long. Yeah, people keep saying like, "Oh, maybe we bring in Darnold," and it's like, "I, don't, I think uh... if if Sam Darnold ended up in a, a Lions j- uh, jersey and anything other than a backup capacity, I would, I don't know, man. I, I just it's how, how when they continue to make decisions like that hypothetical decision, how do you continue to love them? It's just. Uh... Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, is it all the? I, they won't, but you know, we'll see who yeah. we uh, who we bring as GM. They I see they they did a interview. 
uh, the old GM for the Texans. Well, he's coming in this week, and they interviewed three in-house candidates. Yeah, so um, the in-house. Oh, he's coming in this week. They haven't interviewed yeah. him yet. I think what's his name? And then um, his name is. I can't find it. It's fine. Yeah, he, he, he oh, he's uh, responsible Rick for drafting. something, isn't it? Yeah, Rick Smith. Rick Smith. He's yes. responsible for drafting Watt, Hopkins, and Watson. It's like, yeah, you can't really. He's a good drafter. Why um, is he gone because of? Uh, he butted heads with O'Brien, so O'Brien got rid of him, and he's been out of football for a year or two, I believe. But uh, uh, it's basically, flexing. Just O'Brien's like, "This is my team. You're out." Bring him in. Yeah, well, he's going to get his interview. And with San Francisco being eliminated as of uh, yesterday, or not eliminated, but losing yesterday, it seems like uh, it's we could have a new head coach in the form of Robert Sala before the new year, in which case I do want him to bring in um, uh, Mike LaFleur, who is the Green Bay head coach, Matt LaFleur's brother, because he's also from Michigan, and he's got that same – idea of offense um that is working so well in green bay i want coaches in michigan that grew up around the lions that know how bad it hurts yeah i suppose yeah i don't know how i like the uh the brother of green bay's lafleur but sure all right well we'll see i don't, Time will tell. I don't know i don't like i don't like uh what's this, uh, the green bay's coach matt lafleur yeah yeah i don't like him what don't you like he just all he does is win yeah, but it's for Green Bay, and I don't like them. <laughs> uh, speaking of Green Bay, we got to, we got a Green Bay fan. Tell us a little bit about our Green Bay fan, Jeff. <laughs> oh boy, is he here? Is he in the? Uh... He's here. He's in the waiting room. Excellent. Yeah, we got comedian David Twitey. He is a uh, uh, longtime Green Bay fan. Uh, I mean, I don't know why, but. Uh... Oh. <laughs> it's gotta be here. so easy yeah but he's here to probably rub it in our face uh what it's like just oh let me just oh, you can like miss a game and be like oh did we win like he can ask that that's his question of like what <laughs> how much did we win by uh and here he is uh david wait david how are you uh i'm outstanding how are you gentlemen doing oh boy we're we're reveling in the in the loss that your team gave us hey you know <laughs> what's it like man <laughs> It feels pretty good, uh, but <laughs> NFC North division champions claiming oh. victory once again <laughs> in the longest continuous rivalry in all of the NFL. Uh, <laughs> I think it would be the Bears-Packers one, but there was like a strike season where they didn't play each other or something. Uh, oh, are we longer than are we longer than the Bears-Packers? I yeah, know it's definitely yeah, it's, one and two, it's, yeah, which is it's crazy. A, uh, but I, I mean, I like, I, I wasn't, I wasn't taking anything for granted. I mean, uh, no offense, the Lions have been a rather sucky team at times this season. That's why the show is called LOL Lions because yeah. you have to laugh at them. <laughs> oh, is that? Oh, that's what you. <laughs> I thought it was Lions. Oh, Lions, Lions. Is what, <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah, we love it. We just keep saying Lions a lot, you know. Just to keep um, our spirits up. But but this is like this is always a weird game. Like I feel like the Packers Lions in Detroit is always a very strange fixture where like up is down, black is white. You get weird shit like like Matt Flynn throwing seven touchdowns or whatever that was. Mm -hmm. You remember that one? Oh yeah. Yeah, we uh We'll make any any quarterback look amazing. Mm -hmm. I think that just... game is the reason Matt Flynn got signed to like a seventy million dollar contract oh, the next it's, year. <laughs> it's the greatest. It's like you can't ask for more from a career. I just want to have one game where he like set a new record for single game passing touchdowns on a team that had had Aaron Rodgers and Brett Favre and Bart Starr and shit, <laughs> and then he just went to the Raiders, was bad for like half a season, and then got paid like. 25 million dollars <laughs> it rocks it's a dream come true it's that's insane. one question all quarterback coaches ask their backups they go listen we like you we want you to do well here you get to start one game and hope it catapults your career who do you want to play against and it's always the lions <laughs> well that's why i uh like i was irrational it was irrational but when the broncos had like all their quarterbacks out with COVID a couple weeks ago and they uh -huh. had to like throw a wide receiver from the practice squad out there <laughs> it's like okay i mean i know in my rational brain this guy probably has like 
saw the playbook for the first time like two days ago and uh like does not know he's not at all prepared for this but what if he just fucking blows him up what if he just tears him apart for like four <laughs> touchdowns <laughs> And then the Raiders give him a million millions of dollars to come in. Yeah, again. and then he <laughs> and then he never has another good game. Like Matt, Matt Flynn went to the Raiders and then got benched halfway through the season in favor of Matt McGloin, I believe. <laughs> Just full of shit like this. I, no, I. Uh, but yeah, I, this was a this is a very satisfying game. I uh, I really there was one. I don't know who the announcers were. For this one but the oh the, it was uh was jonathan vilma is i can find out was it what was mark something the big buff oh, mark guy Schlereth. yeah mark yes. Schlereth. mark is, Schlereth. he's probably the one i'm thinking of because he was just saying dumb shit the entire game and i was really <laughs> enjoying it like oh the announcers you, dro- were driving me insane there was a point in the second quarter where like i wrote this down because it tickled me so much he said some people go to a museum to see a work of art but we're here in Detroit watching Aaron Rodgers paint a Picasso. <laughs> and then he uh, called him an artisan. Yeah, right. Yeah, that was the, the next line. Was, that is a true artisan. It's like, that doesn't mean what you think it means. And yeah. then everyone's like, oh, yeah, you got just smoked in the head for your entire career. And then at one point, I know he was joking, but Schlereth said, I mean, all those years with the Denver Broncos, I single-handedly won us those Super Bowls. And it's like, dude you're the you're nuts really because i don't remember that guy's name (laughs) i feel like terrell davis was pretty good not too bad right and what was it elway and then didn't jake Plummer win one there too like those are more jake Plummer is a more memorable name in a denver broncos jersey than mark sheriff i I don't believe that jake Plummer won a super bowl with them they won two in 98 and 99 and those were both elway i believe okay because the Packers lost the first one of those, and then uh, the Falcons lost the second one after the Vikings fucked themselves in the butt. <laughs> yeah, these I can. Yeah, the announcers were getting on my nerves so much. Just the amount of, oh yeah, look, he's having fun. I hate when they just talk about how much fun the players are having. We see it, we know, but it's just yeah. like, oh, he's having. A, look at that, he's having a nice time. <laughs> well, I mean, that was like. I, I grew up a Packers fan with Brett Favre as the quarterback, and that was the funniest shit. Cause you just see, you just see like Brett Favre get killed on a sack, or it's just like, oh, that guy's, that guy's not alive anymore. And then he gets up, and you see him like, like patting the the defensive lineman on the back. And they're like, oh, that's what you love to see. And it's like, no, this guy's gonna die. When he's- <laughs> <laughs> his bones are pulverized he's like 45 he's the most concussed man who's ever lived stop <laughs> encouraging this behavior <laughs> and he's also a great jeans salesman <laughs> yeah they're also just constantly like with brett Favre. they were telling you you know that's just a kid playing football in the backyard back there just equate it like hey uh, yeah. all you kids keep doing this <laughs> every year a- I mean, it's like when you were a kid and you used to send pictures of your penis to a local sports <laughs> reporter. <laughs> yeah, every Green Bay Packers, like every, every single year, there's always two games a year where the announcer's like, they just have the most fun. Every Green Bay quarterback has the most fun yeah. I've ever seen. <laughs> Well, I don't know if they do that with Aaron Rodgers, really. It's like, because he looks pissed off out there a lot of the time or like kind of sad. As a Green Bay fan, I am curious, what is the story with Aaron Rodgers? Because, like, the public image of him is he's the biggest toolbox ever. Yeah, Nobody I, loves him. He's, like, he seems weird. <laughs> That's about oh, yeah. all the insight I have on it. <laughs> Did he you see when like he a- threw that 400th touchdown to Devontae Adams and Devontae Adams got on his knees in the end zone and just handed it to him? And that's the graphic they used for their relationship in all of yesterday's game? Yeah, pretty cool. I didn't like that one. Yeah, <laughs> they'll creep you out. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Feels a little bit weird, but I mean, uh, whatever. Uh, being a sports fan is being is like being part of a cult, and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go at the the main guy in the cult. <laughs> yeah, you can't. You can't. You, until, he, guy, until he changes jersey. 
I'm gonna get harassed by all, all kinds of shadowy figures or whatever. <laughs> yeah, no, Aaron I don't Rogers, know. I give up his family. A <laughs> State Farm will come after you real hard if you disparage Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> <laughs> I, but yeah, I don't know. It's just like everything about his uh, everything about his public facing persona is so weirdly calculated, and there are just like all these hints of strange shit, like where. Uh, where his uh, like he never talks to his family and whatever. It's yeah. like I don't know. Maybe his family sucks shit. I have no idea. <laughs> I don't know about them at all. Except that he has like a brother who was on the Bachelorette one season, and that guy seemed okay. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I it, like I it, people are like he's gay. I'm like maybe I don't know. It, like he might just be from space. I. <laughs> yeah he's just a just a weird football slinging autistic man <laughs> yeah i don't i don't know i just all i know is that he can be like running full out to his left and throw the ball across his body on a goddamn dime 35 yards down the field and that's pretty cool <laughs> i read a story uh, about aaron Rodgers um taking one of his backup quarterbacks to a frat party at the uh, at the University of Wisconsin when they were both in Green Bay Pack, like they were both playing for the Packers. And Aaron Rodgers got so into the idea of being one of the quote unquote brothers of this fraternity that they were like judging what t-shirt contests and doing beer bongs and everything. And he just wanted to, the quarterback said that he just wanted it to seem like he had friends. Like he went fully into it, immersed himself into fraternity Lord. Well, I gotta see who that was. It's even really? we- it's even weirder. Like the the State Farm commercials, like the not. And this isn't just true of Aaron Rodgers. Like all of the athletes who pitch for State Farm, their commercials make it look like it's ruined their lives somehow. Like they just have their their State Farm agent is constantly pestering them, or like, or alternatively, he's like the only person they have in their life, and like. <laughs> They're like, please don't go. Please uh, help me out with my insurance some more. I mean, Chris Paul has a whole other problem where Alfonso Ribeiro is trying to steal his life. But <laughs> and also, yeah, like as a uh, as a crazy person, way too close to his son constantly. And Chris oh Paul's yeah, just, like, that part is fine with it. <laughs> that part is really weird. Like that is that is a, a psycho from like a a, a '90s thriller adapted from an airport novel kind of behavior <laughs> were you uh were you were you worried at all during this game or were you just, was it a comfortable win um there's like there's so i while i was watching the game i was i was texting with my friend chris welty uh who who is also a packers oh, he's a packers fan. yeah yeah he's a big packers fan and he's like he's the sort of person who's like like impossible to watch a game with because like anytime the Packers give up like a 20 yard play he's like that's it it's fucking over (laughs) (laughs) and he's a Packers fan (laughs) yeah uh yeah it's it's really funny like uh the like you can be a fan of like a pretty successful team and then like find a way to like work yourself into this whip dog posture where it's like anytime that something bad happens it's like i knew this is gonna happen um, <laughs> that's why that's what we do that's our yeah. thing it's yeah the, right uh, anything bad that's it that's over uh, it is absolutely done. cultural appropriation of you know probably <laughs> probably any of the other teams in the nfc north certainly the lions are like the 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 Vikings, I think, have an even worse version of it because their team will give them hope like once every ten years. Like they'll they'll like oh, yeah. be on the cusp and then just blow it in the worst way possible. Yeah, and then like, they'll guarantee uh, Kirk Cousins all sorts of money. It's like, oh well, that's not gonna help you out. <laughs> yeah. I mean the thing is like I, I grew up in Minnesota. I was a Packers fan because I was seven and Brett Favre had a weird V in his last name and so did I. And then they really? won the Super Bowl the next year. And I was like, All right, I guess I'm in. Um, <laughs> that was all it took. <laughs> so I, well also I was just kind of a contrarian asshole kid and I wanted to like a team that everyone else hated. Um <laughs> But, uh, like, so I remember all that shit. Like, when the Vikings were better than the Packers for a little bit, they had, like, that killer offense and everything. 
And then there was the one year where their kicker hadn't missed a field goal the entire season, and he missed the one that would have sent them into the Super Bowl, and they lost to the Falcons. And then, like, the next year or something, they lost the NFC Championship, like, 41-0 to zero against the Giants. It was incredible. <laughs> Good and you Lord. were like, I'm glad I jumped ship at age yeah. seven. <laughs> yeah, I like I feel very good about the series of decisions. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you definitely you definitely picked the right team. <laughs> yeah. But but I at this point I have this relationship with the Vikings where it's like they're kind of like my number two team at this point. Like if they're not playing for the pa- they're if they're not playing the Packers, I'll generally like root for them. Um but as long as Kirk Cousins is their quarterback, fuck them. I hope they lose every game. <laughs> <laughs> every, every Vikings fan hates Kirk Cousins. We had, uh, <laughs> we had Chad Daniels on after the, uh, the Lions played the Vikings, and he came on in full Buffalo Bills gear. And <laughs> listen, listen, you know, a lot of people say that, you know, whether whoever wins this uh, election, it, whether it's Biden or Trump, they go, well, he's not my president. Well, you know what? Kirk Cousins isn't my fucking quarterback, okay? I can't deal with it anymore. And it was yeah, like, yeah. Everybody can't stand that guy. <laughs> but oh, oh and uh, speaking of people that nobody likes congratulations on matt patricia oh yeah getting rid of yeah it's like because it is the this was like a good game yesterday and the, the lions the lions like ended up getting shredded because aaron Rodgers was painting a picasso but this team does <laughs> seem to like palpably be enjoying themselves a lot more than they were like a couple weeks ago like it is so it was so obvious the whole time that patricia was in charge that his team fucking loathed him oh yeah they hate someone i want someone that was there like at least for a year from the caldwell uh era and then happens to be at the uh in matt patricia's team until he got fired and then finished out under bevel and i want them to write a tell-all book because Matt Patricia had to have done some of the craziest. I've never heard a team so publicly speak out against their head coach. Yeah. What kind of monster is this man? I mean, like, he is we, an alleged rapist. So let's make sure we remind everybody of that. Yeah, yeah, he <laughs> right? allegedly is a rapist. <laughs> that, they knew that before they even hired him, right? Didn't you? Yeah, get yeah. It came out after he hired. Oh, okay. But, yeah, New England never ran a background check. And then all of a sudden we hired him. And they're like, no, let's, let's run a background check now after he's already signed the contract. Like, oh, shit. But I was reading there was an article about it on uh, I think this is on defector I can't remember which one of their writers it was but like it was about I didn't realize I had forgotten that the team was actually pretty good before he got hired that they finished like 10 and 6 or something the season mm-hmm. before that mm-hmm. and then like his whole posture as a coach the entire time has just been like well, listen, they, it's like, it's like uh, when you're president and you just blame every bad thing on the past administration. It's like we were handed a mess to deal with. I mean, we're actually doing a really good job. And it's like, no, actually, the team was pretty decent. Like, they were missing some pieces. But, like, you just turned this into a complete trash fire. Oh, yeah. He, could, well, he, he would talk. Of Matt Stafford's career. Oh, that poor guy. He would talk like the fans didn't have the internet and could get, just look at history. Yeah, all right. He was, yeah, yeah. yeah he was he was awful, and he did that while like being mean to everyone on the team too. So it's just like and yeah. the reporters. He would yell at the reporters all the time. He'd tell them to sit up, and then he would he would make have a little respect for the process. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what, the, what the fuck are you talking about? It's football, dog. <laughs> uh, how uh how how do you feel about that uh, second the quarterback you drafted? Are you are you think that was a waste? Or are you looking forward to him? I'm still like abs. I'm like utterly confounded by that. I uh, was any I mean, is any Green Bay are any Green Bay fans like were they like yes that's good? Did anybody I think mean, it was good? It really so. it really smells a lot like when they drafted Rodgers behind Brett Favre. Like let Rodgers do his thing for a couple of years. We'll take our time with this kid. And- yeah. But even then, it's a weird choice. Like, I think that everyone, like, when they drafted him, everyone agreed that it was at the very best a reach that he was, that he went, like, way earlier than he was projected. And it's like, maybe they're just like, we can't let this love guy get off the board. But I don't, I don't see it. I, I also don't follow college football at all. So, like, all these guys, have, I'll just, like, Google them. And it's like, okay, ESPN says he's good. So, yeah. <laughs> well, you have another quarterback with a V in his last name. 
Here's I mean, that's all. That is good. <laughs> but that one's that one you hear. Yeah, that's right. True. That's true. Yeah, it's a loud it's not a, it's not a fucked up <laughs> sabotage V. That just, that just, uh, no one can get your name right. It's not a baloney G. <laughs> it's not a Colonel L. Um, they, I was re- when the draft was going on. This is t- back to the point of nobody liking Aaron Rodgers. I mean, the front office of Green Bay must not like Aaron Rodgers very much because they've never drafted him a wide receiver in the first round. There, there was one that they got in the second round named Devonte Adams, who has turned out to be rather good. They also he's, got a guy he's, named. He's so good. They also got a guy named Jordy Nelson, and I think the second or third round at some point. I, I don't know. I, I think that uh, I would, I would say that there are a lot of areas where they've sort of failed to build a winning team around Aaron Rodgers. I don't think wide receiving is like an issue. They, they we have always had wide receivers. It does seem like uh, it seems like Aaron Rodgers makes them good though, because anytime they've left, they've been bad in my remember i mean like uh that's true there's not really anyone who although it's like it's sort of a weird sample group because most of them were sort of past their prime anyway randall yeah. cobb is the only one i can think of who's like actually starting games right now but the other ones like greg jennings uh james jones those guys were already like pretty old yeah, yeah. jordy nelson wasn't as old but he was coming back from injury too so it's always a crap shoot Let's talk for a second about how great Devontae Adams is, though, because he missed – I mean, he went out in week two against Detroit and then missed two more games. So he missed a yeah. equivalent of three, and he's leading the league definitively in touchdowns. This guy is insane. Yeah, he's he's only started 11 games this season. I was looking at this earlier. It's I mean, it's fucking crazy. Um, and like, again, this is an area where we're, we're, I'm spoiled. Like for the most part, the Packers have had someone who's like really stepped up at receiver basically every year. The, the the difference is it's like, there's not really a a clear number two at this point. Like, like, uh, big Bob Tanyan is good for a touchdown every game. It seems (laughs) like Bob Tanyan. Oh my God. I want to buy a Ford from him. That guy has a dealership. Large Robert Come on down to Bob Tanyan's. (laughs) Um, but I mean, I love, I love a tight end. Who's like a six, five dude who used to play basketball. That, that seems like a pretty good recipe in the red zone. But like, besides that, it's like the other receivers are like Marcus Valdez Scantling, who had a really good catch for a touchdown yesterday. Yeah. yeah, Um, but is like, seems like he's having a hard time deciding whether he's good or not. Um, (laughs) And then like early in the season, Alan Lazard was getting a lot of play. Yeah, and then he's been hurt, and I think he had COVID at one point too, so he hasn't really been in that much. He had like yeah. one catch yesterday. Oh, um, oh, he had COVID. I think I think he did at some point. It's, Maybe that's why like, you can't smell the end zone. I've been sort of spo- I've been sort of spotty on what's happening this season. It's so difficult to keep up with, like who is out for what reasons, and also like. Like partially oh, yeah. because of COVID and partially, well, all because of COVID, but partially because people are like going on the reserve with COVID, but also time doesn't exist anymore. So it's like, it's very hard to keep track of when one and with when one week of the NFL ends and the next one begins and whatever. Yeah. So yeah, it's wild. Cause like you have a game on like, Oh, it's, it's Tuesday football now. <laughs> You're like, yeah. Wait, what day is this? Like, right. Yeah, who yeah. knows? You haven't left your house. Have you? You're like, no. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like my, my <laughs> fantasy, <or> night. <laughs> I'm in, I'm in two fantasy football t- uh, uh, leagues this year. And both of them are like totally fu- like, I if I have lost I'm out of the playoffs in both strictly due to my own incompetence because like so I just like be like what day is it and I would forget to check like who's in for games or whatever and people are dropping out for all kinds of reasons now so uh. oh yeah yeah all my players yeah my whole team got devastated uh, I had Barkley and I had a uh, Odell's out everybody fell apart on my team yeah, I I had Galladay. It's like, what the fuck is? Oh yeah, Galladay. <laughs> I got Galladay. Yeah, um... <laughs> he's never coming back. He's he's gone. He'll probably go to Green Bay. <laughs> yeah, he has definitely played his last game in a Lions jersey. I feel like. <laughs> oh, that was the other thing I was going to say. Tavon Austin is a welcome addition too, because we we had this guy who was returning kicks for us for the past couple of years. Named is something Shepherd. I have no idea why he's been the guy. He 
is like at best a fucking liability on returns. He like he's he's fumbled it and he never goes anywhere on returns. But they've just stuck with this fucker for like three years. So I'm glad that we have someone on special teams now. Tavon Austin, like I don't think he ever reached his potential in the end, but he's he's a great little gadget player. You can really put him anywhere on the field. I like those guys. Yeah. Yeah. Your you, your uh, Daryl's Patterson, your uh, Percy's oh, yeah. Harvin. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? Uh, what do you think, guys, going to do for the season? You think you you think you're making a bull run? What's your prediction? I uh, think it's going to be pretty similar to last season, where we're going to look good until we get completely fucking wiped out by a team that uh, exploits the fact that we can't stop the run at all. So you think it's uh you think it's another push to the NFC Championship and then heartbreak? I think that's probably right. That that you would be favorite my, in the NFC then. That would be my guess. Although it's it's sort of hard to say because like every team seems kind of shitty in their own way. Um, yeah, but, who's the who's the good NFC runners? I mean, I mean like, it seems like the the Saints would be my initial thought. I sort of don't believe in them when they get to the playoffs. I'm like, I'm not as afraid of uh, Tampa Bay because Tom Brady's just like a million years old now. And it's like, like, it's really bad. It's so hard to sustain like throughout the entire season. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, I guess, I don't know. I could see the Packers making the Super Bowl and just getting savaged by the Chiefs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Whoever's going is getting spanked by the Chiefs. Yeah, maybe Seattle makes it out of uh, the because right now the uh, if if the playoffs started today, Green Bay would be in at one, Saints in at the two seed, then the Rams yeah. at three, the Washington Football Team at four, which is insane. Uh, Seattle Seahawks at five. The Bucks <laughs> I mean, at that, six, that shit the is so funny. I love that shit. We're like a like someone could. Uh, I think the Redskins could finish like six and ten and still make the the playoffs. Right? <laughs> Yeah, because yeah. uh, nice Dallas. Dallas. Jesus Christ, is I, I uh, yeah, the football team. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, the Cowboys are four and nine. The Eagles are four and eight and one. And then the Giants are five and eight. The Washington sits ahead. Uh, the NFC I seven. forgot about that tie. That's the, that was the funniest <laughs> shit. Wait, who tied? The, the Eagles tied the Bengals earlier this season. Yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, yeah, J- Jalen Hurts uh, played pretty well yesterday. I mean, Carson Wentz is bad, and it seems like they figured that out. Yeah, what's he? Yeah, he's gonna. He's is he gonna go to like New England or something? Because they're not gonna stick with Cam there either. No, um, yeah, I don't, I don't know, know but go. New England's probably gonna be pretty bad for a little bit, and I'm excited yeah. about the prospect of that. Yeah, it's nice to have uh, the Bills. I love the Bills now. I think the Bills are my second team. Yeah. You you want good things you to happen think to you them. They have cool. <laughs> they have cool uniforms too. Yeah, I like their uniforms. uniform. I, I texted my buddy in uh, my buddy Sean, who's a big Buffalo fan, lives out there, and I texted him yesterday. I'll go, man, those uh those red on reds are real real good looking uniform combo. They look oh, great. Yeah. I love a mm-hmm. white helmet. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's good. I like our all blues. I think our all blues are cool. I like our all blues. That's, you, that's what you sound like. <laughs> I think we got nice all blues. <laughs> I like the grays. You like when, the grays? Uh, those are those are kind of cool. I kind of like those in spite of myself when they do like the color rush thing where it's just all like pewter. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think a- the, yeah, the all grays, the all blues. Was mm-hmm. Green Bay, does Green Bay have an all green? They go back no. to like that navy blue, don't they? I think that when when Green Bay has done like the monochrome jerseys, they've either been all white or all gold, which looks stupid. Oh, all but gold? Their, their throwback yeah. is that one with the big circle in the middle, right? Oh, yeah. And then they have brown helmets because it's yeah. supposed to be like the leather helmets. <laughs> <laughs> it's like make them brown. I don't know. <laughs> what, what a terrible call on that. Yeah. <laughs> Make them brown so it looks like it's a big leather metal ball. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> you know, speaking of terrible calls, I have to I have to ask you what your thoughts are on the uh, relationship between the referees and the Green Bay Packers. I don't know. Everyone loves <laughs> to cry. I'm uh, asking. I don't, I'm not. I'm not because I will to play devil's advocate. Um, what the uh, we had the Lions had four penalties yesterday for I think sixty yards, and the Packers had twelve. So they were definitely yeah. getting. It just seems like where they get the calls, 
it, oh it, yeah there's and that I was mean, a catch that was a dang catch there's definitely oh that was crazy i i mean i i thought that was a catch i i see why where they're coming from not overturning that but i don't know it's just like everyone loves to everyone loves to cry and complain and have a good time talking about how hard everything is on them in life but like yeah I, like it goes both ways the Packers have had like any, any of those games where there's been some weird bullshit it's gone both ways in, in some in some way shape or form. you guys did get screwed on the uh the Seattle Hail Mary yeah, that was that was bad. We had like a couple of those against the against the Seahawks over the years. But yeah, it's just, I just like I don't know. I think what it comes down to is that football is like a really fucking stupid game. It has like way too many rules. It doesn't make any sense at all. It's like they keep there's a more. holding on every play, you know, and, and like they love <laughs> to say that. And it's like, well, doesn't that just mean that this is a dumb game? Like, this is all like. <laughs> made up and this is stupid and no one should really care about any of this <laughs> yeah the holding on like there's a whole hold on every play is like well then is it then should it not be a penalty yeah or? then like just let them do whatever they want it gives a shit. as yeah. long as that the new rule is as long as it's not a hug yeah <laughs> like, yeah the rules are so like i don't know if you don't if they don't see it <laughs> okay so how do you play this <laughs> no, it's like it's uh it's it's the most american game in that is just got like or they're like constant they can't stop fucking tinkering like all right we gotta have like a we gotta have we gotta have checks and balances on the referees so that they don't have too much power. So we'll do this thing, but also tie goes to the the guy that the thing that they said before. We've got to respect precedent and everything. Oh, I'm yeah. just talking out of my ass, but it's stupid. The NFL they is so just, dumb, they'll just, and they'll just try rules out for a year, like the uh, the pass interference challenge. They're like, okay, we'll do that for a year. You know, yeah. let's not do that. Anymore. And it's yeah. like, oh wow, that sucked in a way that was completely predictable when we decided that we were gonna do that. But yeah, it is why in the in like the one I don't know they didn't even show the replay of it of the uh, the late flag where it like just came up. Remember the late flag where it extended Green Bay's drive? I don't know. It was it was it was a late one. They didn't show the replay. You couldn't see it. But it was like it took them a long time to throw the flag. There was like no flag for like it felt like a solid minute. <laughs> the I got to be honest, like the last five minutes or so, like I wasn't paying a, a, like a ton of attention because like once the game seemed like it was pretty well in hand, I was sort of splitting my attention between watching that and playing the Mad Max PlayStation Four video game from two thousand fifteen. <laughs> That sounds entertaining. <laughs> yeah, that's what we should have done to start to watch the game. It's really dark. <laughs> There's mutants in it and shit. <laughs> and I wasn't paying attention to the very end after uh, Stafford got uh, jacked up because oh yeah, guacamole. Oh yeah, I forgot that Chase Daniel came in and was mm -hmm. just like cutting the Packers up for a drive. Yeah, he yeah he ran. But he then had to settle it. for a field goal. Yeah, but then they gave him a holding call because they're like, eh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's wild that they could just be like, ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, I guess just like, decide. I think one of the things with, uh, I think one of, the, I think there's this happens in like all sports to some degree. Like, you'll definitely see it in baseball where it's like if the if like a team if like an ump gave like a bad call on balls and strikes, maybe he'll like, he'll, he'll do a little like call something that's a little iffy on the next, on the other team too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To balance it yeah, out. I agree with that. But like the swings are so much bigger and more arbitrary in the NFL just because it's like, oh, okay, well we're calling pass interference on this. That's like a 48 yard penalty in this case. It's like, yeah. Right. yeah. And then like, we'll make it up to you. And it's just like a small five yard gain. Like yeah. it's even penalties. <laughs> And I can't, ah, if the flag doesn't come out immediately, they shouldn't be able to do it. I can't, I don't understand how they're going to wait a few and they go, yeah, yeah, why not? <laughs> I just think that they should do the stuff that I want them to and stop doing all that other stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Spoken like a true American sports fan. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, in con like, it, 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 not in conclusion, but like in summation, <laughs> I would say that the NFL is very stupid and I hate myself for continuing to watch it. Oh, yeah. It is they a get their hooks addiction. in real young. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
yeah, thanks. Thanks for coming on, David. Do you have anything? Would you like to uh, anything to plug? Um, I mean, I am for the most part not doing jack shit these days, but uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Twitey, T-V-E-I-T-E, and you can listen to my podcast, David Hates David, with my friend David Citrick. It's a podcast where we don't like each other. <laughs> 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 that's fun <laughs> do you and david have anything in common like what's the common ground where you guys well like, we hate each other but do you both enjoy one thing um well yeah probably like a lot of things i think like we there or at least there's a lot of overlap you know uh just like being online too much uh left-wing politics both being like weird tall guys from the upper midwest <laughs> Who hates each other? Who hates one more? Oh, I don't know. That's a tough. T that's. I think we. I think we bring different flavors to the table. <laughs> oh, that's nice. So <laughs> it's like, is chocolate more of an ice cream than vanilla? Some would say so, but uh, I, that's a weird thing to say, in my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> Wild. <laughs> well. Thanks for having uh coming on here, talking about the Green Bay Packers with us. You know, I hope you go. I hope you get get close to the Super Bowl, and uh, you know, that's as far. Thanks, man. I really, yeah, I hope so too. I hope that we get far enough for me to believe and then be disappointed. <laughs> well, hey, wait, honestly, do you really like? What do you think is gonna happen with the rest of this season? Like, do you think there's not gonna be a single other COVID thing? Like. Oh, who knows? I do know that the governor of Florida wants to pack out Tampa Bay for the Super Bowl. Let's yep. do it, baby. Let's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hope, I hope Green Bay wins the Super Bowl and the most amount of people have ever died in American history. <laughs> I want Raymond James Stadium. I want them to pack it out for the Super Bowl and then put like a bubble over it and it becomes like our, our gladiator. Game. Let's it's cast just... a ghoulish pall over Patrick Mahomes' second <laughs> Lombardi trophy. Yeah. Just a shadow of death <laughs> follows the game. Yeah, you know something's afoot when, uh, when after the AFC Championship, Kansas City makes it, and you just see them taking in trucks and trucks of ketchup because Mahomes is one of the few that actually knows what's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Green Bay has won the Super Bowl, and it is also a day of mourning because <laughs> hundreds of thousands of people. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Yeah, I hope that they win the Super Bowl. I'm going to go catch COVID at the victory parade. Yeah, yeah everybody catches. <laughs> Fly into Milwaukee for that one. <laughs> All right, man. Well, thank you so much for coming on. And uh, I hope the Packers don't hurt you the way the, uh, the Lions continue to hurt us. God bless. I've enjoyed spending this time with you, too. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, David.